Welcome to our presentation on skeletons in your closet. It will begin momentarily. I'm Virginia Bell Johnson. We were just beginning to hear the words coronavirus in February when Katie asked me to do a program on imaging your own story. That virus changed all of us. It placed all kinds of restrictions and limitations on our plans and on our entire lives. Access was not what it once was. So this program is taking a far different approach than what Katie and I planned for then. But there's even an opportunity in coronavirus. The summer reading program slogan is image or story. Dealing with the virus could well be that story. And Wisconsin Historical Society is collecting stories of the way that the virus has changed our lives. The society would welcome your story, whether it's a paragraph or a couple of pages. Your story is important to the history of Wisconsin, and you can find that information online. If you can't, just call the library, and they will point you in the right direction to participate. There are some free things that you can find to help you with your story, too. There's a free family search app. It's a way to save audio recordings and pictures. You can find that online, too. But if you need help finding it, again, call the library. Librarians like to be bothered. They like to be asked questions. And in this day of COVID, you would make a librarian's day by calling them and asking them about something. There are other stories, though, besides COVID. Some of us use the lockdown period time to go through things we've meant to do for years and years, like cleaning closets or basements or attics and just pitching stuff. We found things we forgot about. We found memories. Some of them were good memories and some were not so good. We came across things, some things when nobody was there to see it, which was good because there were sometimes we cried at those things and sometimes we laughed at those memories. We have lots of stuff in those closets, cupboards, and boxes. When we think of writing our own stories, we always think of the Ancestry TV ads. It always looks so simple, a waving green leaf that's going to tell us all we want to know. But is it? It's just like the cleaning you just did, but uncle um, unlike cleaning that closet, the stuff in Ancestry might not be your own. You're going to find a lot more skeletons in your genealogical background than you ever did in your personal storage areas. When you want to add any of that information, be careful what you wish for because all those leaves call attention to work that's done by somebody else. Maybe that work is in your family, maybe it isn't. When you just take the name John Kennedy, for instance, there were and are thousands of John Kennedys who have been on this earth. If you haven't done your own work, how are you going to know if you were distantly related to the late president or if it's really some bank robber or, or horse thief or worse? For those of you who are thinking of subscribing for Ancestry, there are some things that you can do for free that won't cost you. And you can always use it at Algoma Public Library or any of the public libraries for free. A subscription just for the United States alone is under $200 a year. That's really quite a bit of money. FamilySearch.org is a free site connected with the Church of the Latter-day Saints. It has the same information in, and you can find just about any document worldwide as long as the LDS Church has filmed it. It's a treasure and it's free. Here again, if you have trouble finding that site, just ask one of the librarians. DNA testing is available from quite a few companies. It's not a panacea, and it doesn't drop everything into your lap, just saving you a lot of work. 
but be careful what you wish for. If you worry about some of the things you might find, just skip DNA testing because sometimes it brings heartache. Technology has changed over the years. And if you do enough work and track down enough people, you're going to have to be prepared to find what could be ugliness. People are people. There are things we prefer not to think about, things that we wish didn't happen, but they do. Parentage and family lines sometimes are not what we thought they should have been. DNA and some of those programs point to directions and other stories. But think about it. When you find the ugly, what are you going to do with that information? What might it do to you? Genealogical programs such as Family Tree Maker is a great program for recording information and adding photos. If you want to write a story about your lineage, the information is there and you can just incorporate it into whatever you are writing. If you don't want to do the writing, Family Tree Maker will incorporate that story into a computer generated story like this one of my grandma. The stories that a computer does are not like the stories that you do, but it's a story nonetheless, and it only takes a computer a couple of seconds to do it, whereas it would take us a few minutes or a lot longer than that. Writing the story of you will take a while if you start with your earliest ancestors and keep on researching and writing. The nice thing about using the computer is that you can keep adding information or taking information out if you find out it's not yours. And if you do it on a computer, it's easy to drop in as many pictures as you would like. I did this one on one part of my family 25 years ago, but the technology that I have today makes it all a lot simpler, and I am republishing that. So, what's next? Well, if you think about it, we all have stories. We all have a story. Our genealogical story would be the history of our ancestors. Our family story is just that. We have personal stories, and then there are pieces of stories it could be pieces of a genealogical story like the Civil War or ancestors trip um, ac uh, across the ocean while immigrating. It could be a family story, maybe mom and dad's wedding, maybe vacations that you went on when you were a kid, a personal story. Maybe it was a birthday or Christmas when you were expecting something that you didn't get and how heartbroken you were. Then it's the information search. We all have our memories. You have your own work and your own words and your own memories. Finding other things, you might be using Ancestry, Family Tree Maker, or any one of those programs. Or maybe you aren't using a program at all and keep your things in a binder. But be careful what you wish for because DNA, Ancestry DNA, 23andMe, Daughters of Eve, and all those programs are out there. If you plan to use a program like that, investigate all of them. Find out which program is going to give you the kind of information that you want because those programs are a little bit different. What are you going to do with the information you have or the things that you find? Well, you could turn it into a book. Some people scrapbook. There are short stories, a single story. Maybe you're into the arts. You could tell your story through paintings. Paintings can be turned into birthday cards, note cards, Christmas cards. Maybe you're finding out about your ancestors and their food, so sewing. Or, excuse me, so baking, sewing. Maybe you enjoy traveling, dancing. There are just so many things to get into. And then your plans. What kind of research do you like to do? How much time do you want to spend on this? What are your skills? And then decide what you might want to do next. What now? Well, start with what you know. Secondly, ask relatives, look at photos, 
documents and old newspapers. Put all the things together and decide what you want to accomplish, where you are going, and how are you going to get there. Maybe the story is going to be yours. Maybe the story is going to be your kids. Scrapbooking is a fun thing to do. With all those pictures that you have, there's a lot that can be used. It's a wonderful way to use the photos and you can add your artistic graphics to tell the story. Maybe the story is of your family. Maybe it's somebody else. Maybe you're making a scrapbook as a wedding gift. They make beautiful wedding gifts. They make beautiful graduation gifts. If you need extra ideas, you can find how to how to's online in books and you can find magazines right here at Algoma Public Library. Maybe in all that cleaning, you came on a family photo that was cute or one that brought peals of laughter, like this one. An early start, a star is born, a little soccer player at, at about eight months old. A picture like this can be glued onto the top of a piece of paper and the remembrance is worth writing below. You can type it, you can write it in longhand, but it'll be something that the family will treasure. You can take all those pictures and stories that you wrote and put them together in a little book or a booklet. It doesn't matter if it is typed or if it is handwritten. Copy shops can run multiples for you and they can bind them with a comb binding or a wire binding at very favorable prices. They make great gifts. This is a, a picture quilt. The one, this one is made with photos, memorable t-shirts and sweatshirts. You can use some of the same ideas to make pillows or Maybe you have grandma's doilies or dresser scarves or some of those things that are just laying in a drawer that you don't know what to do with. They also make great pillows. You can do a lot with home decor with just some of the extra things that you have laying around and a little bit of imagination. You can use those old photos and online templates to do things like make a calendar. If you don't have access to a computer and you want to make a calendar, all you have to do is get your photos ready and the information that you want. And most copy shops have templates that they can just slide your information into seamlessly and then run them off for you. Prices there are pretty favorable too. You can also make DVDs or slideshows out of your pictures. You scan the pictures and put them on a DVD to make that slideshow or video, but if you don't have that technology, many copy shops can do it for you or can direct you to somebody who does. Many of us have our old VCRs um, or VHS and beta videos that we have so much family pictures on. Those things, if we no uh, longer have the machines, can be taken into many of the copy shops and they will put them on current technology, a DVD or a flash. There again, the prices are favorable and you don't lose all the things that you have. Making some of your pictures into a family DVD and adding some microwave popcorn makes a great Christmas gift. Maybe you know about your family's ethnicity and maybe you don't. Maybe as you start looking at things, you will find out that one of your ancestors was a great Norwegian rose mallow. That's something that you can learn. Perhaps in doing a family history, you might get into the folk music of your particular country. You might find out that your Czech ancestors enjoyed doing the polka, just as the German, Austrians and Polish did. You might learn to do that. 
Family history always includes food, and you can learn to bake kolaches or Belgian pies. You could learn to make lefse or taco shells. Harder to make sausage, but you can go out of Connips and Stangleville and find Mentwurst, potato sausage, and other sausages that have an ethnic um, reflection. Take your family recipes and develop a family cookbook that includes a picture of each person who gave you the recipe. If you want to, add a paragraph about them. There again, you can have them run off and they can make a wonderful gift. Maybe you've traveled to other states and other countries where your ancestries lived. There are stories and pictures that you've taken and just think of all the things that you can do with those to build the story or drop them into a story you already have. We all have so many old pictures lying around. You can use some of these pictures to make booklets to help save the memories of Alzheimer's patients. You can turn them into booklets for little kids. They will see their ancestors and they can learn the words underneath. Use the same technique, adding a picture on one page and a paragraph about the particular people on another page that will tell little kids something about their history. As time allows, identify those pictures that you are keeping. Try to date them and note the occasion. Adult children aren't always able to identify themselves as toddlers or remember events. As you clean, fill an album for each child and grandchild. Your children might be, or your grandchildren might be too young now and your 40 year old children don't give a rip, but eventually they're going to come to love those pictures of you, your parents and all that history. When you're cleaning, you find those precious things that some people might call junk, but you know it isn't. If nobody knows that dirty old silver spoon came from Germany, grandma's treasure is going to go right out with the garbage someday. Maybe along with great grandpa's Civil War tin type and more. Who's going to know what that stuff is? Why would they want to keep something they have no idea of? When COVID-19 is finally passed, Everybody would like a family reunion. And if there are stories with skeletons to discuss, it won't. And as always, there are just a few more things that I've forgotten about. Most everybody has a cell phone. And on most cell phones, you can video and record sound. Computers have the ability, um, computers have cameras, computers have speakers built into them. With a cell phone, or a computer, just think of what you could do with your own picture, telling a story. Maybe you're telling the stories of your life, your family, or maybe you're just offering advice to the future. But that too makes a great video. We're lucky living in Northeastern Wisconsin. If your family has been here for any amount of time, lots of our newspapers are online and they are online for free. Algoma Record Herald is online from 1873 to 1230, 1960. Kiwani Enterprise is online from its beginnings in 1859 until 1923. The Door County Papers are online since their beginnings in 1862, and I think they're up to about 1980 right now. Oconto County, all of its newspapers are also online. All of those papers have been done with private funds. So all of those papers are available for free use, whether it's in the library or whether it's on your home computer. The best way to do it is either Google it or access the library's portal. There are paid newspaper sites online. Chronicling America is one that comes to mind. If you see those newspapers that I mentioned in that site, they are fee-based and you're going to be charged. But as long as you go to the portals of the individual libraries, you will get those papers free forever. Lastly, there are skeletons in every closet. Technology ensures that we need to decide up front how we're going to handle anything that we can find. 
There are so many ways to tell a story. You don't need thousands of names in a computer program. You are the most important part of your family. Your family is the most important part of the world around you. And it's just like tossing a stone into Lake Michigan and watching the ripples. You cause the ripples and you get to decide just how far they go. Skeletons make a good made for TV movie. Imagine your story and just imagine you what you can do with it. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you to Virginia for talking about skeletons in your closet. Um, join us again for any other programs that we have at the library. I hope you enjoyed our presentation. If you have any questions, please contact us. Bye now.